Welcome to Monday Thursday services at First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh. I'm Pastor Tracy, and I am excited for us to hear once again this very powerful, this very gentle part of our story of who God has called us to be from the Old Testament and from the New Testament. This is a, a powerful story that so many of us have heard uh, time and time again, every week, every year during Holy Week. This is a time when we remember that Jesus sat with his disciples and began sharing the Lord's meal with one another. And for generations and generations, we have shared that meal with one another, receiving new life and revival within our hearts and our communities. But also, on this Monday Thursday, we remember the new commandment that Christ gave to his disciples around that table, but also to each of us. And that new commandment, that mandate, that we love one another just as Christ has loved us. And then we have the example to follow of Jesus when he took ordinary water and he took a towel and he went around to each of his disciples' feet and he washed their feet. He was their servant. And that is the example that we are to follow, that we serve one another, that we love one another as Christ modeled for us how we ought to do that. So I invite you to come on in and hear again part of our story of who God has called us to be. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me as I said to the Jews. So now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. 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 Amen. And now, let us pray together. Gracious, loving, almighty, powerful, and gentle God, we ask that we would hear the call to hear the new mandate, the new commandment that we love one another. May we be faithful in following the example of Christ that we may wash one another's feet, that we may serve one another in all that we do. It is in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen and amen.